Hey there, welcome back to the channel. Thanks for being here. Well, it's time for another Tools and Tech Tuesday, and this is a Senglid Wi-Fi bulb. This thing gave me a pleasant surprise, but disappointed me in a few ways too. Let's talk about it. We'll set it up, connect it to Google and she who shall not be named, talk about the features, and finally, my overall thoughts on it. There's not much to the packaging, so we'll speed right through this. You can pause the video if you want to see the information on the box. Wow, that's pretty tough. There's not much involved in the physical installation of this product. You just screw it in. It's a light bulb. And you'll see that it'll do this thing where it turns on, it gets dim, then bright, then dim, then bright a few times to let you know that it's ready to set up. In order to use this thing as a smart bulb, we need to set it up. So we first need to download the app. So this is what that looks like. We open up the app and it's going to ask you for permission to send you notifications. Next we have to choose between creating an account or logging in. I didn't have an account so I had to create one. Type in your email address and accept the terms of service. Next they're going to email you a verification code. Then you create your password and tap create account. It'll take a few seconds then you hit start. It'll take a few seconds again. Then you just tap Add Device. On the next screen, you choose the top option, Wi-Fi LEDs. The pictures will change on the next screen, but this is what it will look like. You just hit Confirm. Next, it's going to ask for permission to discover devices on your Wi-Fi network. Next, it's going to ask for permission to join your Wi-Fi network. If you haven't yet, make sure that the bulb is on and then hit next. Next, it's going to ask you to go to your settings and select the Senglid Wi-Fi. Back in the Senglid app, it's going to look for the bulb. Once it finds it, it's going to ask you what Wi-Fi network you want the bulb to connect to. This is going to be your Wi-Fi network that you normally connect to. Enter your password and tap Next. Give it a few seconds to think and then tap Set up a room. Mine was going to the bathroom, so I tapped Bathroom and then Next. Next, you can name the bulb, but I just left mine as the default. All right, well, your bulb is now set up to use with their app. However, if you want to use a voice assistant, like she who should not be named from Amazon or the Google Assistant, then you can go ahead and set that up now, or you can wait till later. I did both Amazon and Google, so if you want to see how to connect it to your choice of voice assistant, you can either keep watching or I'll have time codes in the description so you can jump right to that part of the video. Let's start with Amazon's assistant. So you select the top option and then tap allow. In the next screen, it might ask you to sign in and then once you do that, you just tap link. Now you're all done setting that up. Now you can use she who shall not be named to control your bulb. Once I hit close, it gave me this little tutorial. All right, now let's set up the Google Assistant. Tap Settings in the bottom right of your screen. Tap Work with Google. Tap Allow. Tap Agree and Link, and you're done. Now all you have to do is just hit OK. First, I wanted to mention that pleasant surprise that I had, and that was that this thing connected really easily. I have a couple LifeX Wi-Fi bulbs, and they were a major pain to get set up because the LifeX bulbs kept on trying to connect to the 5 gigahertz Wi-Fi network that my Orbi routers were putting out. Unfortunately, 
With the firmware at that time, there was no way to shut that off. Rather than having to shut down all my Orbi routers and mess with all that stuff, what I ended up doing was taking an old router to my sister's house and using the same SSID and password to set up the LifeX bulbs. And then, once I got them back home, they worked just fine. This one, I didn't have to mess with doing any of that. As you can see on the box, it says that it's 800 lumens, which is decently bright. But that brings me to my first disappointment. I was hoping to use this in the bathroom where I could just use it as a normal light and then at night I could dim it to the brightness of a night light. Unfortunately, at its dimmest, it's still pretty bright to use as a night light. You can see that they estimate the yearly electric cost at $1.08 per year. However, it would be more than that for me because here in Southeast Michigan, my electric rate is 4.9 cents per kilowatt hour, even in off-peak times. I tested for power consumption and at its default, my meter was reading 3.3 watts. Even when the bulb is turned off, it consumes some energy in order to be constantly connected to your Wi-Fi. When I connected my meter, it said it was 0.9 watts, so just under 1 watt in order to have it on and connected. When I did the math, that 0.9 watts over the course of a year, even if I never turned this thing on, would still add up to be over $1.50 a year. But I'm not particularly concerned about it because even if I left it on at 100% all year long, it's still going to be less than $5. Alrighty, so you can see that this is what it defaults to. So we're hovering right around 3.2 or 3.3 watts. Turn off the bathroom bulb one. Okay. Set the bathroom bulb one to 50%. Okay. The, set the bathroom bulb one to 100%. Okay. The, set the bathroom bulb one to 75%. Okay. One of the downsides of a Wi-Fi bulb is that it takes more energy just to stay connected than some of the other standards. When I tested the Philips Hue bulb, it took significantly less energy just to stay connected without the bulb actually shining. One of the pros of a Wi-Fi bulb is that it doesn't require a hub. And one of the cons of a Wi-Fi bulb is that it doesn't require a hub. Let me explain. So the nice thing about not having to have a hub is that this runs on Wi-Fi, you don't have to buy anything else, and it's standards based. On the other hand, the fact that it is connecting directly to your Wi-Fi router means that you are taking up one of the devices that your router is able to support. Certain routers that you may have gotten with your ISP may really only support 15, 20, 25 devices. And technically, even if your router can support more than that many devices, you can still end up with congestion slowing down your network. It's worth mentioning that there's controversy over whether some of these other systems like Z-Wave and Zigbee that use hubs actually might cause some interference as well. So that may negate that point. So whether you want to go with Z-Wave or Zigbee or one of the other standards that requires a hub or something that connects directly to your router, like a Wi-Fi bulb, is kind of a toss-up. So overall, I like the fact that it's easy to install. I like the fact that it's fairly bright. I also like the fact that it's shaped like a normal incandescent light bulb, and its color is very much like a normal incandescent light bulb. My experience has been that some lamps and fixtures won't fit the shape of a Philips Hue bulb. Personally, I think that the interference issue for your Wi-Fi and the energy consumption are pretty negligible. One of the disappointments for me was just that it doesn't go very dim, so it's not going to be useful as a nightlight. It's worth mentioning that you might want to be careful because although the physical shape is the same as an incandescent bulb, so this will fit physically into any lamp that fits 
an incandescent bulb. I did find that it's a little picky. When I put it in the bathroom fixture, it lit up fine. When I put it in a lamp, it didn't want to light up. So I wondered if the lamp was bad. So I plugged in an incandescent bulb and the lamp worked. So I thought, okay, I'll go try a Philips Hue bulb in it. And that worked. So I knew the lamp worked, but I also knew that this worked because it worked in the bathroom light. So I tried a different lamp and it worked. So this seems to be a bit picky about what lamps it'll work in. So overall, I'd say if it works in the fixture or lamp that you're gonna put it in and you don't need it to change colors, I would say this is a pretty good deal for the money. Drop me any questions or comments down below. I love talking to you down there. Thank you so much for watching the video, and I'll see you next time. Hey there, welcome back. <clears throat> hey there, welcome back to the channel. Thanks for being here. Well, it's tell. Hey there, well, personally, I think that the congestion issue 